Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Ah, the woke, tolerant Democrats. Tolerance and inclusivity is what they say. But of course, we always make the point, we always call them out on the clear hypocrisy, that what they really mean by mud diversity and inclusivity are gender and race quotas. It's all superficial, it's all surface level, it's all image. When it comes to real diversity, like diversity of beliefs and thoughts, well, we pretty much all know where they stand. They claim that the right-wing side is a cult, it's extremist, a bunch of intolerant bigots, the list goes on. But then, of course, like I always mention, again, if you look at the actual definition of what a bigot is, to be intolerant of other people's beliefs or view system, we see exactly which side is bigoted and which side isn't. And man, the elitist, bigoted Democrats are at it again. This time in full force, it's almost as if there was a DCCC memo handed out to the entirety of the Democrat Party that the attack plan, the rhetoric plan, the messaging plan ahead of 2022 is to push as much divisive rhetoric and demonize Trump Republicans as much as humanly possible. It seems as though the DNC is applying a basket of deplorables strategy, and well, like most things the Democrats do, it's not exactly a good look. They look absolutely terrible. And let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. Let's cover the divisive nature of the left, the bigoted nature of these elitist leftists, and especially politicians, the intolerant left. We've got some stuff to get into, folks, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so to start off this video, we're headed to New York. When I did my polling analysis video about a day or two ago, we were talking about the 19th Congressional District in New York, and I made the point that New York is becoming more and more blue, more and more socialist, left-wing, whatever you want to call it. The idea that we would see significant Republican gains in the state of New York seems relatively unlikely, maybe in certain districts, but as a whole, New York has chosen its path, and it's essentially the path of Marx. We already know there's a mass New York exodus, especially with conservative-minded people and independent people who have had enough and are moving to red states, the state of New York and the city of Manhattan continue to trend leftward. And if you're a leftoid, then you're probably celebrating this fact. Well, apparently, according to the current sitting governor of the state of New York, it's not enough. Take a look at this headline. Kathy Hochul's call for 5.4 million Republicans to leave New York is dangerous and disgusting. Governor Kathy Hochul, who hasn't proven shy about issuing orders, had one for the state's Republicans this week. All 5.4 million of them. Quote, just jump on a bus and head down to Florida where you belong, okay? She said, you are not New Yorkers. I mean, what a despicable thing to say. I mean, talk about being a bigot. If you're not with the Democrat agenda, then you're not a New Yorker. And it's funny the way leftists could get away with this kind of stuff, but if a conservative ever said anything of the sort, if Ron DeSantis ever said that if you're a Democrat, then you're not a Floridian and you might as well move out of the state, you should get lost and go to New York where you belong or California where you belong, could you imagine the outrage? And I always find it so astonishing how these self-righteous leftists can just say this stuff with such empowerment. But really, it just comes off so arrogant and disgusting. I mean, it's one of the main reasons why Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election. I could put all Trump supporters in the what we call the basket of deplorables. She smirked after that one. She thought, oh man, did I hit the nail on the head with that one? But it pretty much sunk her campaign. But this is really what we've grown accustomed to with these leftists. This is what they do. They're LARPing in their minds as if they're social justice heroes and fighting for something greater against the evil of the right wing. But really they're living in a fantasy land. They're really just a bunch of arrogant, elitist, know-it-all liberals who end up coming off real cringy. And speaking of that, speaking of deplorable moments or basket of deplorable moments, well, Joe Biden's jumping on the bandwagon. Here's Joe Biden's new 2020 messaging campaign. The Republicans have made their choice to go backwards, full of anger, violence, hate, and division. But Biden really didn't feel like he nailed it, so he went a step further, saying this, quote, what we're seeing now is the beginning or the death knell of an extreme MAGA philosophy. It's not just Trump, it's the entire philosophy. Wait for it, it's like semi-fascism. Well, remember when they did six months of research to come up with the term ultra MAGA, and it backfired on them spectacularly? Well, they're clearly continuing with this strategy to demonize and antagonize and attack Trump Republicans. Now it seems as though the game plan is to call Trump Republicans fascist. Even Corrine Jean-Pierre defending it at the White House press room. Uh, only semi-fascism come in. Yeah. Uh, is this something we're going to hear more of, that phrase? Is it something the president's going to kind of embrace? Or is there any sense that it was, uh, you know, a little impromptu and it's going to turn into a kind of basket of deplorable thing that he regrets and that tries to be quiet about? I, look, I was very clear when, uh, when laying out uh, and defining uh, what... Uh, 
you know, MAGA Republicans have done, and you look at the definition of fascism, and you think about uh, what they're doing in, in attacking our democracy, what they're doing in taking away uh, our freedoms, uh, taking away, wanting to take away our rights, our voting rights. I mean, that is what that is. It is very clear, and that's why he made that um, that uh, that powerful speech uh, that you heard uh, from him last night. And he has not shied away from saying that. He but again, look, my take on this, my perspective, not a good look. We've seen all the far lefty social justice Twitter types use the word fascism over and over again. Everything I disagree with and everyone I disagree with is either a Russian bot or a fascist. It's not exactly a good look. We saw how it failed spectacularly in their attacks against Ron DeSantis even recently, but this is now the new strategy. It's the basket of deplorable strategy. Republicans are somehow fascists. Say the Democrats who lock down the economy, shut down your business, tell you what you can and can't say all mine, tell you what you can and can't do with your body, with all of their ridiculous restrictions and mandates. You know, the political side that's trying to grow government into this massive entity that dictates your life and tells you what you can and can't do. And then, of course, there's a Republican Party that wants small government and more personal freedom. Well, apparently, the Republican Party is the semi my fascist party completely ridiculous joe biden was questioned about a statement and he said this what do you mean by semi-fascism in, in december you will you know what i mean you know what i mean yeah no not really just like i didn't know what you were talking about with your whole eight thousand dollar checks i didn't get a check for eight grand from the government they just among other things does that make any sense to anybody or is it just me no, Joe, I literally have no idea what you're talking about half the time. What I do know, however, is that you are a massive hypocrite, Mr. I'm gonna be a president for both Republicans and Democrats. I'm gonna unite this country after Donald Trump ripped it apart. And then, of course, he takes over and ends up being one of the most divisive presidents of all time, if not the most, and his constant slanderous attacks on the right wing. It's just not a good look. You look pompous, you look elitist, you look like a bigot. Just like Charlie Chris, who's now taking on Ron DeSantis in the state of Florida. Charlie Chris tells DeSantis supporters, I don't want your vote on first campaign stop. It's not a good look. Those who support the governor should stay with him and vote for him, and I don't want your vote. If you have that hate in your heart, keep it there. I want the vote of the people of Florida who care about our state. Good Democrats, good independents, good Republicans, unify with this ticket. You know, Republicans are trying to convert you. Conservatives are trying to win on the merits of the argument and convince liberals that their ideas suck and that they should open their eyes to a different worldview. In a sense, it's a very inclusive and accepting place. A lot of former liberals defect from liberal ideology or the Democrat Party and are welcomed into Republican circles with open arms. Same thing for minority voters. But on the Democrat side, of course, we know it's a very different situation. Conform or else. If you're a black voter and you decide, I'm no longer a liberal, I'm a conservative, well then, of course, they tell you that you're a race traitor. If you're a conservative, you're a fascist, you're anti-democracy, you're a threat to the nation, a threat to the homeland, you're stupid, you're uneducated, non-stop slander and ad hominem attacks. One side wants to have a discussion, the other side wants to shut down the discussion, force ideology, force conformity, and if you don't conform, they want to shun you and exile you from society. Just like Kathy Hochul said, if you're a Republican, then you're essentially not a New York. Yorker and you might as well leave. That right there is the perfect example of leftist ideology, modern leftist ideology. It's become a cult. The tolerant, inclusive left strikes again. That's what I got for you guys in this video, though. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you're up for it. I'm going to get back to work, though. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.